All right, so let's recall kind of at this point in the video set where we are. So remember, we're talking about deductions and losses, primarily deductions so far. And we started off with our ordinary and necessary business deductions. And then what we've done is peeled that back and said, okay, well, let's go through a bunch of things that aren't deductible. All right, so we went with things that were against public policy, like uh, lobbying costs and political contributions, and fines and penalties. Then we talked about things we have to capitalize as opposed to deduct. Well, another thing that is non-deductible is when you incur expenses that are related to the production of tax-exempt income. And you know, I'm going to go through an explanation of that, but when you think about it, that makes sense, right? If, if I'm allowing you to exempt the income from taxation, then why on earth would I allow you to deduct the expenses that are associated with that? So let's say Warren Court borrows $100,000 and purchases $100,000 of tax-exempt bonds. And so what's going to happen is, uh, let's say that the loan is at 4%. And so Warren's going to take a deduction for the 4% interest it pays on the loan. That's $4,000. Well, because of Warren's corporation, right, it, it's after-tax cost is only 3.16%, right, because, of course, it gets a tax deduction for the interest that it pays. But let's assume for a second that it could actually generate a 4% return of those tax-exempt bonds. Well, what that does is creates an arbitrage opportunity, right? So the more they borrow, the more they buy, the greater the tax-exempt income. So they could instead borrow a billion dollars, purchase a billion dollars worth of bonds, and they would ultimately make money. And of course, the, the code doesn't really want to reward that sort of, uh, re, you know, reward for no economic risk. And so they shut down this idea that you can take a deduction for expenses that are related uh, to the production of tax exempt income. All right. So there's a few things that are what I like to describe as almost not deductions, right? So maybe they shouldn't be deductible, but the code says, yeah, let's go ahead and give you something. So I want to focus on startup costs and organizational costs. So these are two different things. Things that you incur that are startup costs are not the same thing as you incur for organizational costs but they are treated identically under the code. So we, we often lump them together. So org costs are the expenditures to form a corporation or a partnership. Things like the cost of organizational meetings, state fees you might have to pay, accounting services that are incident to the organization, legal services. It does not include the cost of selling or marketing shares or ownership. Startup costs are the costs you incur to start up a business. So they're associated with investigating a trade or business or sometimes known as pre-operating costs. So organizational costs, the idea is, well, wait a second. If it's costs associated with the organization of your entity, then it seems like you would recover those costs over the life of the entity. Since a corporation has a limitless life, an indefinite life, then you should never be able to recover those costs. And startup costs are almost not deductible because of course, if you're not involved in a trader business, then you can't deduct expenses, right? Then they're just personal expenses. So if you're in your pre-operating stage, you're technically not in business. And as a result, you can't deduct them under 162. So instead what Congress has done is said, okay, well, we're gonna give you a break basically. The general rule is we're going to let you amortize these costs over 180 months, which is 15 years. So to the extent you incur organizational costs, you can amortize them over 15 years. To the extent you incur startup costs, you get to amortize those over 15 years. However, they said, you know, small businesses, you know, eh, it seems crazy to make them amortize it over 15 years. Why don't we allow them to just deduct those costs right up front? and then not have to amortize them. And they said, yeah, that's a good idea. So what's it mean to be a small business? And they said, well, first off, let's put a cap on the amount that you can immediately deduct. Let's put a cap of $5,000 on that. We'll put a cap of 5,000 on startup. We'll put a $5,000 cap on organizational costs. Because remember, they're not the same. 
And then what we'll do is we'll say when that organization incurs either startup or organizational costs that exceed $50,000, we're going to phase out that $5,000 immediate expense deduction. So let's do some examples of that in order to maybe better understand it. So V Corp incurs organizational costs $4,000. They start business on April 13th. Oh, apparently I'm a little bit tired this afternoon. How will they be treated for tax? Well, $4,000 is less than the $5,000 limit. So they can just deduct all $4,000. Okay, what if instead the org costs that were incurred were $7,000? Well, 7,000 is less than the $50,000 limit, but it's more than the $5,000 immediate expensing limit. So we'll let them deduct the 5,000, but the remaining 2,000 is going to need to be amortized over 180 months. Since they started business in April, they can amortize nine months during this year, and then they'll take 12 months every year until they're done. What if the ore costs were instead 51,000? Okay, well, now we're above the $50,000 threshold by $1,000. So what we're required to do is reduce the amount we can expense by that phase out. So 5,000 is reduced by 1,000 down to 4,000. We can expense that 4,000. What do we do with the remaining 47,000, right? That's the 51 we incurred, less the four we can deduct. That remaining 47 is gonna be amortized over 180 months. So what if org costs were instead 56,000? Well, again, we're over the phase out threshold of 50,000. We're over it by 6,000. And since 6,000 would reduce 5,000 to a negative number, then it's basically reduced to zero. So that means there's no expensing at all. And all 56,000 would need to be amortized over 180 months. And if you change the word org cost to startup costs, it works exactly the same, exactly the same. All right, one other item where there's an almost not deductible is something associated with uh, the deduction for business interest. So first off, this limit doesn't apply if the gross receipts of the business are 27 million or less. But if it does apply, it says, look, you're not going to be able to deduct interest if it exceeds your interest income plus 30% of your adjusted taxable income. Okay, so that means we got to know what is adjusted taxable income. Well, that's your taxable income without the interest income, which that makes sense because we're adding that anyway. It's without any deduction for interest expense. It's without any non-business income. And it's without any net operating loss. So think of that like it's your earnings before interest in taxes, or what they call EBIT. And if your deduction is limited, you can carry it forward indefinitely into future years and try to deduct it against your income in those future years. All right, I think that's probably enough for this video. We'll do the rest in the next.